Go also has something that I use a lot, and that's called literal types. And a literal type is, liter is literally just a type that doesn't have a name. And it's important to understand that you don't have to name everything. All right, show me for a second. You don't have to name everything. One of the biggest problems I see in code bases is type pollution, where people are over typing things, especially when they're trying to write object oriented code and they want to build methods around everything. You don't have to name something unless it's going to be used more than once in multiple places in your code base. If it's just going to be used in this one place, don't pollute the code with a name. We can just define things there literally on the fly and use them. And that's going to help with readability as well. So let's go back to the code here. And what you're seeing here is the struct declaration happening in line with the variable construction. So we're saying, let's construct a variable named E1. I'm going to set it to its zero value. And you know what? Instead of using a named type, let's just define the type information right here on the fly. Because I don't need this anywhere else but right here. And you'll notice that E is no different than, E1 is no different than what it was before. It's just that it's not based on a name. It's based on this literal type, not name type on the fly. Now, here I'm setting this literal type declaration to its zero value. But if I want something other than its zero value, I still need literal construction. So look at the syntax here. We're doing our variable declaration, we're doing our struct declaration again. We're defining that user defined data. We're using our short variable declaration operator to assign it to E2 because we didn't want zero value here. And what we're doing now is saying not only define what the data looks like, but let's also construct a value of this type right here it's within the scope of the same syntax, setting it with some values. And again, we have access to all the fields. So again, what I want you to notice here is that you can name your types like we did previously, or you can define that type information on the fly during the variable declaration, which a lot of times I will do when, once again, this type information is only isolated in this code. I don't need it in multiple places. Other than that, that'd be type pollution, right? That'd be type pollution. 